Welcome back to Sisneus. Welcome back to Rob's Coding School. That's what I think I'm calling this series. Who knows? We are today at episode two. Last time we had the introduction. Today we'll have the, I guess you could say the most simplest, simplest code, the simplest logic. Turning on light. <clears throat> so I've made a preset up here. Which is, uh, first of all, we have a power. So this section here is uh, free from anything else. I have a power meter. So basically the cable goes up here, goes this way, comes down, and there. This one goes back down into the circuit somewhere down here so I can read it and rewrite it to this one. I'm going to show that later date how we can do something like that. But for now, that's what I do. So I can see how much power we are using. And the exact same thing going on going on over here. Sorry about that. Uh, we have five lights for this example. And I can see I have not wired the last light up. Like so. So we have five lights and we want to turn them on. So what do we do? We'll, we will need a screwdriver. That's the important one. Then we'll find a IO. First we'll start off with the logic reader. On the left of the logic reader we have an input a port for the ingoing value, the ingoing feed, the, what we want to read basically. Up top we have the power and to the right we have the outgoing, so what we have read. Um, we're going to place it down here. And then over here we're going to place another one called a logic writer. Simple as that. Can dump that there. We will need to find a switch. We will pop a switch somewhere. We can pop it here. Or we can pop it here. It doesn't matter. We can pop it up here. Uh -huh. And this is now in state zero, meaning that it's off. Let's grab our little tool here. Let's stop that. So this one should be pressed to cable. So we want to do a cable down there. Uh, let me just... The cable goes... Yeah, like this. Come on this and then straight down across and like so now please notice as this one is the reader and this one is the writer we don't need to do anything up because we need to write this writer needs to get information from this one and we know we have the output from here and the input from here so that's enough and then we go up and like this that is a simple setup. Next, we have a cable coming down, which is going to these five lights. And let's put this up here. Now we can easily write to a light. So let's take a screwdriver. On the in, we're going to select the switch. We're going to set, select a variable. We can test several. We can set setting. Setting is the usual one you want to go for. Uh, you could also take open, but uh, let's go back here. Uh, uh, uh. Setting is the one you want to go for. Now, how do I know what to go for? Well, there's two ways you can see. So you take your tablet. You see here the device configuration of the item that I'm pointing at, in this case the switch. You can see the, the open is zero, the lock is zero, and the setting is zero. Then you have the prefab pass. The, the reference ID and the name hash. If I click it, it changes to both open and setting changes. Now, open and, and, and setting should be the same, but setting is always the one you really want to look at, in, especially in terms of this. Now that we have set up our logic system, we want to turn on the reader. We can see now we're drawing the 10 watt that I spoke about last episode. So he is drawing some power. Without, he's not. You're going to hear that little ticking sound. I don't know if you can hear it. Anyway, he is currently reading, as you can see there on him, switch setting equals zero. He's reading zero. Mm -hmm. uh, and you again here, you can see he is not reading anything. Let's click him. Now the setting. So his setting is now the same as this one. Now our writer wants to read... Uh, f from the 
reader. So it wants the input from the reader. So if I keep clicking here, I can only click one. There's only one thing on the network, which is quite easy because it's just this one. We want to select a light. So we, if you click, keep clicking, it will scroll through every one of them. So I don't know which one I've selected, doesn't matter. And I will choose the on. Now, again, another way you can see what you want to read um, what you want to control is with the station PDA. If you go, let's say, a wall light, wall, mm, what is it? Wall light. So these logics are the ones that you can either read, or, as you can see, you can read and you can read right to them. So the power usage, which is what I'm, I'm actually reusing, uh, I could, I can, I can read. And then I have my on function, which obviously is the on off function of turning the light on and off. I can read and write to this one, which is what I'm going to do. I can also lock it. There's no point in doing that, but I could. Um, so, yeah, also Station P is a good way to go. Currently, he is not doing anything because he's off. We'll turn him to zero. Turn him on. Now we are 20. And. We click there and we have one light on and of course he goes up to 70. so this is the simplest setup to use for a light however there is a different way a way that sometimes is good sometimes bad but it saves some power so let's remove these and let's put that there put that there and let's take him and let's just pop in a where is he a logic writer so as you can see like before this is actually a switch that works <clears throat> he will be able to if we take this one ah silly me not remembering the cable so he'll be able to go straight to light and turn on oh i forgot to turn that off so as you can see, he's still using the 10 watt, but he can write to something directly. So, in a way, that could be quite nice. But, um, yeah, it's up to you. You can also, with him, use a BATS. Uh, why is he? Writer. So, if you chose to do the logic switch, logic switch out, then the wall light, then the on. If I click on now, all of them goes on. So he's still just writing to one light, but he is then reading whatever he's doing and sending to all of the lights. So you are still saving a device up here. It is not very nice though, is it? It's uh, it's quite, mm. but but for some cases it's it's handy, and you save that little um, switch. As as you can see. Uh, let, if you turn this off, we're using 20 watts. So 20 watts is far below what you would need for a uh, batch uh, IC chip to be functional. But how would you do this with an IC chip? Let's try it out. So first off, let me just get the things together. There we have a setup similar to what we have had over here to begin with, uh, but obviously with the IC housing and the chip. If you turn him on, you can see straight away we're using 50 watt, so already more than we're using here, and here we can write to multiple lights already. Uh, what would we do if we would change so he can... Um, send out to one of these well let's set the computer the laptop even so <clears throat> on him we have the four the six we have the six uh, pins that we can put on for a device so we're going to put device zero as 
the switch. So first we're gonna pop him in. To this one, you see he's an arrow now because he doesn't have a chip. We're gonna do import. So how do we do this? Well, first off, we do an alias. And you see that says str, that is a string name. So here you can type uh, switch. And where is this switch? Well, it's on D0. And it turns green, means it's okay. So you see here, it says D0, D1, D2, D3, D4, D5. And DB is the base itself. So you see the kernel is state is 0. That's the DB. So we can actually write to the, the house itself. Anyway, <clears throat> so right now we are reading that. Let's get a light as well. So alias light1, D1. So now that we've done our two inputs, <clears throat> uh, sorry, input and the output, we're gonna load the value that we need from the switch. But doing that, we need L for load, and we load it into a register. We have registers from zero to 15. So R zero, we are gonna use one here, so we don't need to name the register, but if you had multiple ones, you could name all of them to make it easier. You same here, you can also write D0 here instead of the switch or you can write switch if you don't name them it's going to be confusing over a long period if you have multiple lines of code next thing we have the logic type now the logic type is what you want to load from this device if you don't know you can either take your tablet look at the device go into station p and look at the device in there if you don't if you're not sure how to spell it or something you can also use these up here they will give you good ideas. So the first thing is the slot variables. So everything that can be found in a slot, let's say uh, damage, that will be on a on a filter. On a filter, you have the slot for the filter um, things. Uh, <laughs> I lost the name for it, but you know what I mean. The two we put in, uh, you can. You can you can read out how damaged they are, the quantity of them, and all this sort of thing. So you, this is what you get in the slot variables. The next one is the variables themselves, and here you have all sorts of things, like setting. Uh, uh, let's see, I think it's it down here somewhere. Yeah, setting is a variable setting that can be read, read or or written, depending on the device. This is exactly what you want to get. You cannot copy and paste here. That's quite annoying, but. Um, you can copy that. So you get that out. If it's orange, it re recognizes what it is. If you move, if you like spell it like this, it's red. Red is bad. You don't want red in the code. So keep that in mind. Uh, just a quick note. F, if you don't know what function you want, they are all in here. So everything in here means something that you can do. So let's say we just done L. If you search L, load, and then it says load device logic type to register by housing index value. So that is what we're doing. Now that we have done this, we want to set this um, light on. And set, you can almost guess what you need to do. Set is an S. And you again, you want to do the, the, which one is you want to say set? You want to set the light. Is that a one? Oh, I did say light one. Uh, I don't know why I call it one. Let's just move that. So let's add one here. And we want to do on. And here we can just put the R zero. Now, is this code ready to be used? Maybe, <clears throat> maybe not. We will assume it is ready. We'll confirm. We'll export. Pop it in here. He is still blinking and being annoyed. That's an unknown line at line 3. Why? What is that? Well, that's because it doesn't have a device. So, the, the, as you can see, we have given it two devices, but it does not have anything. So, let's change this one to a switch. Oh, it became green, but then it turned orange again. That's because now it's moved on to line 4. So, it, you see it goes down step by step. And we, that's because we don't have anything here. So here we're going to take a light. Now it's green. 
but nothing happens. If we leave him on, he turns on a light. But you can't do it anymore. Why is that? Well, the IC code works like a looping system. So basically, once it while it runs, it starts at zero, goes all the way to 127, and does nothing. It stops. It needs to be told it has to go back. We basically need to tell it, you have to loop. So, we're doing start, meaning we're starting a function. It could be, you can call this anything. You can call it testing this fancy function if you wanted to. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what you, why you would call it that, but you can. So that's a function. When we are done with this section, these two lines, we want to go back and basically run in a circle. So we're going to do J for jump. Either we go to a line um, number, or we go to this fancy te this test testing this fancy function. I can't even say it anymore. Let's confirm. Let's transfer this. You can see that it's a bit red, but I that don't look at that. So now he's off, and he's on. Lovely. That's amazing, isn't it? Now, what if we want to turn all of them on at the same time? Well. We don't have enough pins yet for all the lights, do we? No, we don't. We have two options. Well, we have about two options. We can set this uh, R value to the DB. By doing this, we do set DB setting and R0. Now let's confirm that. What we've just done is that now we could technically take a batch writer and read from this one. You see, the state of the house changes now. Meaning that it would send out a value that we can read from other devices. But it doesn't turn on anything on. We don't want to add any devices here because this should be able to turn everything on. <clears throat> now what we'll do is we'll do Bats reading, bats writing, sorry. We are going to remove that because we don't need that anymore. We're going to remove that because we don't need that either. And this we don't need either. What we're going to do now is set B. So we know that all our lights are the same. And now we have set batch. And it's asking for a device has, ha, device hatch and then the logic type, and then the R value. But what is the device has of these ones? Well, if we go in here, wall, light, you go this one. Uh, it's this one. So you can click on this text, copy the clipboard, go back in here, put into the device has, put on here, and then R0. Confirm. Export. Now that we have this in and we've done the code, we should be able to just send that up. Yes, there we are. That is the simplest way to read, to write a batch with an IC house in. But as you can see, we're using 50 watt. 50 watts are too much for just lights compared to the 20 over here. Over here we'll always use 20 if it's just the, if it's just lights. So this is just a quick quick little one to learn the first basic few steps on how to code all use logic. Same things we use to do in both places, but do two different ways. And clearly if it's just lights, the logic is the best way to go forward. Next time we will look into something with pressure potentially or temperature or both we'll see uh until next time take care buddy bye for now